the CEO and founder of the digital currency firm Circle as well as the chairman of the board of Brilliant Cove is an online entrepreneur and technology from the United States named Jeremy Allaire. He expressed his opinions on the widely held belief that cryptocurrency regulation in the US market will result in a sense of uncertainty regarding the regulations. The benefit of digital assets being global in scope and generating interest internationally was also mentioned by Aller. The Circle CEO discussed how various nations in the European Union and Asia have expanded the reach of their legislative frameworks for the cryptocurrency industry. The SEC is not the appropriate regulator for stable currencies, according to Jeremy, who also suggests that another stream of regulators that don't have a prejudicial attitude toward a particular cryptocurrency should take over regulation. The current macroeconomic environment, rising interest rates, and the allure of using a currency without a central bank, according to the CEO, are fueling the demand for cryptocurrencies. The US administration is far from offering a unique and unambiguous perspective, despite growing regulatory pressure around the crypto market. This is in the midst of rising interest from new players entering the Bitcoin ecosystem globally as well as in the US. The top crypto players in the nation are becoming fearful and apprehensive as a result, worried that the US may miss the opportunity to become a prominent crypto hub. The decentralized nature of cryptocurrencies paves the way for smoother acceptance in other nations, unlike its dominance in the world of financial markets. Please properly subscribe, like the video, and leave comments in the section below before we begin. Enjoy! The SEC is investigating whether stablecoin issuance violated investor protection laws, according to the Wall Street Journal. It's the latest hit to an industry rattled by layoffs and bankruptcies. Joining us now on set, Jeremy Allaire, a CEO of Circle. We all saw the, just speaking of Bitcoin, but we could talk crypto in general, but you know, 65 to 16 will get your attention and certainly not qualify as currency, uh, I don't think, in terms of Using, and you don't want something if you buy something when it's 16 and six months later you look back and it's 65, you feel like an idiot for, for spending it on anything. So it's not there yet. But recently, as the regulation and the overhang has increased, it somehow has gone, Bitcoin has gone from 16 back to, to 24,000, 23,000. Is this crypto spring now, in your view, uh, after a crypto winter? Or not, well, not yet. I, I don't know about the specific label, but I think um, what you're certainly seeing is that, you know, just like with big tech and tech, there were, you know, names that, you know, on the NASDAQ that Down sold the same off amount. significantly. Yeah. And then cool. people sort of say, okay, where, where are the, the, the long-term platforms? And, and there tends to be, uh, you know, some higher degree of confidence in that. And so, you know, Bitcoin is sort of here to stay. Ethereum as a platform people are building on is here to stay. You've seen that. Notably, we also saw, you know, all of last year during the carnage, while, you know, all of these digital assets were down so much, uh, you know, USDC actually grew. It was one of the only assets that grew uh, in 2022. And so a digital dollar that works on top of these blockchain networks is has real utility and real value. It maybe gives us somewhat of an indicator into where does the utility come from as we go forward? It, it, it almost seemed as Gensler, the tougher he talked a couple of weeks ago, the, the more it the the whole marketplace seemed to resist or, or embrace the, the idea that maybe we finally get things sorted out in, in terms of regulation. Yeah, I mean, I think to some degree there is uh, a, uh, uh, a kind of, well, there's an anxiousness like, OK, what are the rules going to be or, what you know, how do we get through that? I think um, the other piece to this, though, is I think it's very easy to get um, kind of grounded in a very U.S.-centric view of the world. What are the U.S. regulators doing? What's happening in U.S. markets? But as we know, um, digital assets are extraordinarily global. Um, the demand and interest in them comes from highly global uh, audiences. And uh, and in fact, you know, when you think about the 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 drivers in, in many cases, uh, you know, rising interest rates. Uh, a strong dollar is actually disruptive to many currencies, sovereign debt issuers, uh, geopolitical uncertainty also increasing. And so the kind of conditions within which one would be interested in a non-sovereign digital, digital commodity has, is, is, is still there. USDC is very safe. Anyone can go and look at 
the uh, the reserves. They can look at the serial numbers of the treasury bills, which are all three months or less uh, with uh, a major accounting firm at a station. And actually, uh, the majority of that reserve, you can now look uh, on a daily basis at those the, those QCIPs uh, through the uh, right. uh, government money fund we set up with BlackRock to, to manage those reserves. Uh, so it is very safe. It is regulated. It is why we've seen a huge surge in USDC net issuance over the past 24 hours, increasing almost two and a half billion dollars, while uh, Binance USD uh, declined uh, mm -hmm. by over three billion dollars. So well, we've, we've help, certainly help me seen. Help with this, uh, USDC. Uh, what, you know, everyone talks about it being one to one, and yet, obviously, you know, there's some some firms that have been paying huge and very high interest rates on that. And the question, of course, is how are they doing that? Well, the, the key thing to remember is if you go to a bank and you give a bank a million dollars, uh, they then actually uh, take that million dollars and lend it eight times over to other people. So you have a de you have a demand deposit, but actually it's been lent out and that's where they're generating the interest that they'll pay you or whatever that interest m might be, commercial finance, what have you. Um, People who take stable coins as deposits, these so-called crypto banks like the Bo bankrupt Voyager, Celsius, uh, you know, BlockFi, people could provide them stable coins. The stable coins themselves are all full reserve, uh, regulated mon electronic money instruments in the U.S. But then they were relending those out to people uh, who were high risk hedge funds or others, uh, and as we've learned, um, extraordinarily weak controls or risk management or leverage or other things. So uh, essentially they were taking that full reserve dollar form of money and lending it to people who were then off, uh, you know, right. taking extraordinary risk with it and couldn't, couldn't return that stable coin back uh, to that lender. Straight up, this may be, I don't know if this is a difficult question for you to answer or not. If you had money on Binance, would you leave it there? It's a, it's a really interesting question. I, I think like right now, it's a moment where uh, everyone is trying to ask, you know, what are what are safe uh, places to hold your crypto? There's obviously the be your own bank, store your own digital assets, keep your own keys, and that will certainly work for some people. I think increasingly people want to see regulated firms that have major global accounting firms that are providing public company levels of audit. Uh, this is why it's so important for more companies to become uh, SEC well, registered and regulated well, what, is the, what is the Allaire family doing? Are you all in cold storage? Or are you, you living on a, a Binance or some other kind of uh, platform, Coinbase well, here in the US? What I can say is, is you know, uh, the Allaire family has a mixture of cold storage and qualified regulated custodians uh, that are regulated inside the United States. Right. Uh, and, and so that, that's, uh, that's my view on, on finally that. Finally, weigh in on this, because we were just talking to Jim Cramer, you probably heard us, uh, about the political uh, donations that have been made to, to so many during this process. Do you hold them accountable for this? Uh, specific politicians or, or, or what have you. Um, I, I heard your comment uh, about whether, uh, is it their job to detect the fraud? Um, I think um, there is an interesting question here, which is, uh, you know, the, 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 the disconnect between a, a firm that so clearly was operating a, uh, an offshore platform that by any comparison to American policy rules was, was doing right. a, a lot of really difficult things and reconciling that with the, the kind of positioning that they had in Washington. So I think more skepticism was certainly warranted. Um, and uh, and so uh, I think there there is a little bit of looking oneself in the mirror on that. The existence of Bitcoin and Ether, in Jeremy's opinion, cannot be altered by any legislation, regardless of their existence. Do you have any opinions on this? What are your thoughts on the SEC and whether you believe he is right in his convictions? Comment below with your ideas to share. Also, please subscribe, like, and enable notifications for our content. Many thanks for taking the time and watching this video.